I think the trust that's been working on this for nearly 15 years now and, and started long before I got involved for instance has involved many hundreds of people just realising this is such a special place with lots of different meanings to different people whether they learnt to swim here or whether they've learnt about it since living in Bath or having visited the heritage here it's such a special place the determination was that whatever it takes we've got to find a way of doing it. I was going to say over the last 14 plus years there must have been moments when people were near to, to giving up hope. I think in those early years and before people really understood about the lottery it was always how on earth will we ever raise that much money and as the years have gone on the costs have gone up and up uh, we've learnt to get a bit savvy about fundraising uh, and getting partners involved and getting sure the council were fully behind us for instance uh, and then learning about the lottery and of course a year ago we were turned down and that was a that was a turning point we could have given up uh, people felt we'd tried ever so hard done our best and we'd failed uh, but then the lottery said to us you've got deficiencies in your scheme but we think you can put them right please keep trying and with that we managed to keep, uh, enable the trust to stay active determined to give it one more go and thank goodness this time it's worked I'm sure over the years you've had to answer this question many 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 times why is this place worth saving and rejuvenating. There's quite a number of reasons that it makes it so special. Uh, it's unique is so overused these days but this place is truly unique. It is the oldest open-air public swimming pool in Britain. We think possibly in the whole of Central and Western Europe. Uh, it's Bath's missing crescent. It's Georgian. It was built for good social reasons and reasons based on what we call today wellness and well-being, for exercise at a time when lifestyles were quite unhealthy. Um, it's using water in the city. This city is based on water. Without hot and cold water, Bath would not exist. It goes back to the very roots of the place. And for that reason, to bring this back into use, which will be predominantly for the local community, visitors will use it as well, but this is a community asset that many people remember and they haven't been able to use it since 1982. People are saying that today. It's great news. We used to swim there as kids. Uh, we're looking at a different generation, one that spends a lot of time sitting down playing video games. How are you going to persuade them to come and support you? Well, I think we'll get them young. young. Many young families live in this immediate area and beyond. Bring the children when they're young, get them to learn to swim and splash and paddle and enjoy water and get them then involved as they grow up into early teens in swimming clubs and competitive swimming if they like to do that. And really, it's so enjoyable to swim in water. It's a great, it's a great facility. And in the 1950s, there was usually 200 kids on the back bank here smoking cigarettes and 20 in the water our water will be a bit warmer than that so hopefully there'll be more but maybe they'll be on the bank still looking at their iPhones and still doing that but they'll hopefully be also using the water and getting some real exercise. Uh, 2019 you'll be getting down to business you do of course have access problems here so do I take it all the construction work is going to be using the river? That's our preferred option it is the most difficult site to access in anything like a traditional sense we've not vehicle, vehicular access for lorries or anything like that we've got an, an, a tiny uh, ginnel way an alleyway down but we've got the river flowing straight past here with access to the river and our planning requirement was that we demonstrate the, the method that caused the least nuisance and disturbance to the residents of the estate, the Bathwick estate, and using the river achieves that. The local authority agree with us on that and have said that that will fulfil the planning condition. So we'll be using a barge, a floating barge with a little, what they call a high ab crane on the back, and we'll be bringing 85% of materials required for the project in on the river and 100% of waste will be leaving this site via the river. What's the schedule? When are you hoping to get things done and dusted and the Lido reopened? Well, I'd love to say next year, but things don't happen that quickly uh, with a, a complicated construction project. Uh, our design team will be reformed in the new year. We'll 
take three months to get tender documents produced. We hope to be able to therefore get that out to tender, appoint a uh, contractor in the summer of next year, 2019. Depending on when that contractor is available to start, and it could be one month or six months, we then begin the project and it's a 12 month scheduled uh, time frame for the project. And we hope and anticipate that we'll be reopening for business in Easter 2021. Wow. Uh, the river, of course, is going to come in handy in terms of how you get here. Uh, maybe an enterprising person might like to introduce a, a river taxi or you'll be in talks with the, uh, the boats that use it anyway for excursions. Yes, ab absolutely. We've, we've talked to all the river operators uh, who, who have a commercial interest in using the river and we have agreed with those operators that run a schedule service up and down the river between Bathampton Mill and Pulteney Weir to use this as a river bus stop and we'll be building a pontoon that meets the specifications so those buses, uh, those water buses can stop here and drop passengers off on a regular basis and we'll have a separate tying up facility for anybody hiring a canoe using their own little boat or dinghy to access this by the river as well. Is there anything you'd like to say to your trustees, your fellow trustees and your supporters? This is your uh, opportunity to wish them the compliments of the season and a lot more. Uh, well, an awful lot more than that. I mean, not only have um, hundreds of people been involved in this project over that 14 years, hundreds of people, many still volunteer and work with us regularly, and we've had many thousands of messages of support over the years, and that support is still strong, as has been recently demonstrated. So the you know, nine trustees represent all those thousands of people and effort over all that period of 14 years plus. And I thank everybody who's ever wanted to support this project, lent it their weight to it, let the local council know that they support it and really it's without their effort we wouldn't be here today with a very positive result from the Heritage Lottery Fund of 4.7 million pounds towards this scheme. It's a wonderful news for Christmas.